Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about Polaroid and what on earth happened to them. Also, I have a Fuji Instax Mini 9. It's a little uh, Polaroid type camera, little tiny pictures about yay big. So just hang out, stick around, and we'll chat about that. If you have any comments, leave them down below and we can talk about that, have a conversation and engage. So just leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, and that'll help out my channel a lot. Thanks a lot. So I've been looking into what on earth happened to Polaroid because I used to always see those. I grew up with these Polaroid cameras as a kid. I thought it was the coolest thing. You'd see your aunt or somebody shaking the little thing. Like they'd be like taking a picture, I'm jumping ahead of myself. They'd take a picture, the little thing would come out and then they're like waving it around in the air and you're like, what on earth is that thing? And then they finally show you and you're like blown away. It's a picture of you slowly coming in. You can see all the colors just slowly melding in and eventually it's a full nice color picture. And it looks a little weird always. Like it's a little, as my son said, it's a little grunge. Like all the dynamic range and everything that you're used to from today's digital cameras won't be there. There's a really cool, neat little quality to it. There's a certain aspect of uh, nostalgia and everything. I think that, that people like to be able to just take a picture and have instant results, something that they can hold on to and give to someone or stick on their wall right away without having to plug it into a computer or do anything like that. And that, that's pretty much how Polaroid got its beginnings because when they first started, and I think it was like 1940, 1942 or 1943, when they came out with their first little land camera, it was a Land 35 or something like that. And I'll put that down below. I'll show a little picture of it too. That'd be even better, eh? They were like the, the first of its kind. They were pretty much the apple of its day. That, that technology just blew people away. There was nothing like that. They'd be able to just do everything that I just said, be able to take a picture, have instant results. Like it would take a week or longer in those days to get a picture developed. So to go from a week to like a minute or a couple minutes, it was just mind blowing. So some of the things that actually ruined Polaroid were the development of one hour photo and digital cameras for obvious reasons. Because people, what made Polaroid so attractive in the first place was the fact that you could just take a picture and a picture would just come right out. And maybe it didn't have the best dynamic range. Maybe it didn't have all the best quality of the best film or whatever, but it had instant results with very tangible results that you could see right away. And that's what people really liked. What families, kids, grandmas, adults, anybody could be a photographer and have instant results. And so uh, like even Kodak tried to jump on the bandwagon, Polaroid actually successfully sued them for $1 billion or a little shy of it. They wanted like 12 or 13 billion though. So they didn't get quite what they asked for. That might have kept them uh, in business a little longer if they had of though. But who knows what would have happened to Kodak, eh? But I mean, I guess that's what happens when you steal people's uh, property rights or what, uh, intellectual property rights. <clears throat> Getting all harsh in the throat here. So it was started by this guy named Edwin Land back in 1932. He started some company like the Land Company or something like that with this other guy. I forget his name, George something or other. And uh, they ended up uh, teaming up with some German scientists who invented this polymer coating that would uh, crystallize and embed itself into plastic. And it was this really uh, interesting technology that reacted with the light and oxygen and stuff like that. Really, really, really cool. But they just couldn't, uh, you know, they just could not keep it up into uh, these days, like with the, with the digital. That, uh, what it really comes down to, their, their failure, their demise, comes down to what they call the success trap. And that's when a company is so successful in what they do that they can't see beyond that. They, they can't see the new technologies coming beyond their own success. So they don't know how to strategize around that. And they end up falling into this trap where they can't compete with the newer technologies coming out because they're so 
immersed and wrapped up in their own little bubble of success, if you catch my drift. That's pretty much kind of what happened to uh, a, lot, a lot of companies as the digital age emerged, so it's not too surprising. And uh, a lot of their, the reason, the only reason I should say why they're around today is because of this impossible project. And the impossible project brought back some of the film technologies and even started making some of the older cameras with a newer type of film and everything like that. But it's not really owned by the same people. All the, the original guy who started it, he unfortunately died in uh, 1991, I believe. But he, he was the uh, CEO for many, many years. But, uh, well, they're gone now. So let's just open up the box for the Instax Mini 9. This is the newest implementation of something like that. Got a little label here thing. Let's bring it closer to the camera. Maybe not that close. Right away, it comes with batteries. That's pretty cool. Not a lot of things come with batteries nowadays. Has a little mini eyepiece to replace the eyepiece for some reason. Oh, here it is. I'm sticking that up way too high. Then you got your instructions. Has a nice little sticker inside for your Instax. I don't know what that really says. Is that Instax or Instax? Instax. I don't know how to pronounce that. Do you? I don't know what the hell. There's some other stuff here. A bunch of stuff. A little strap that comes with a little strap here. Look at that strap there, look at that. And it's got some nice bubble wrap you can pop. This is the only reason why I bought this thing. Do that. Let's just listen to this bubble wrap. Aren't you glad you tuned in? Oh, the camera. Ding, 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 ding. So uh, you turn this on by pushing this here button and this thing pops out like that. There's no batteries in it yet, but when there's batteries in it, trust me, nothing but action. This is not an LCD screen. This is where you load the film. Sorry, I'm not looking into the lens because if I look into the lens, I won't be able to see what I'm tapping. Now I can look into the lens. Now I'm looking, see. I'm no Peter McKinnon, sorry about that. I keep trying to open the non-LCD screen, which is actually where you load the film, but don't do that. There could be film in there. There's not when you first buy it. There's no film in there when you first buy it. Just to let you know, I already opened this. This was just for the camera. So yeah, you gotta buy film. Film's expensive too. Box of these, here's what it looks like. Instax Mini, you get a little box here. Comes with 10 times two. So you get 20 pictures. This was pretty much $20 Canadian. I don't know how much that is American. It's probably like 16 cents. 16 cents American, 20 bucks Canadian. This was uh, $80 Canadian. It's about five bucks American. Check that, it's about 20 cents American, 80 bucks Canadian. It's a lot of money in Canada. You're basically looking at, if you're a king in Canada, You've got a whole room full of these. If you're, you know, unlucky king anyway. Not very many kings are allowed to have a room full of these. You gotta be a really lucky king. So now I'll show you some of the pictures that we got off this thing and show you how lucky you could be if you were a king with a room full of these. Unless of course you live in the States because you could pretty much just line your walls and floors with these things because they're so cheap, you know? You could like grind them up and powder your nose with them.
So that's it. That's the Fujifilm Instax Mini 9. It's pretty cool little camera. I think it's uh, I think it's pretty neat how you can just instantly get something really cool and tangible in your hands. And uh, as my son says, I th he thinks it looks really cool and grunge and it's got a certain uh, unique kind of aesthetic to it that a lot of uh, other cameras or, or film, you would have to do editing to, to get that type of aesthetic or look. So this comes right out uh, and you can really play with it and, and try to get different results with the lighting and stuff. As you saw, that one picture that we took turned out a little dark, but maybe that's what you're looking for. It has a neat little ring around it and the light tells you when the light is good and when it's uh, proper for, uh, for a good photograph so you're not just wasting your film. But I don't think it always turns out all the time. You might want to like, take a bit of a chance and you know when the light's not quite up there and still take a photo. And it can be kind of expensive doing that in Canada. Like I said, uh, one one print's costing you a dollar and in the States that same print's gonna cost you like 75 cents or something like that, all joking aside, not like, uh, you know, pennies. But uh, thanks for sticking around. If you have any comments, questions, or anything like that, leave those down below and we can talk about it. It would really help out if you liked and subscribed to the channel, hit the notification buttons and do all that jazz. And let's, talk and communicate and come on back for some more. Love you.